Verily, there is no greater endeavor more worthy of a true gentleman or woman's attention than that of accurately firing a very large gun at a big mobile metal box. This is something I'm sure the Bard, or I don't know, Benjamin Franklin, some old-timey guy, definitely would have said had they lived long enough to see tanks. And also become more politically correct. And also become much worse at English. But seriously, the challenge of accurate gunnery is definitely what draws me the most towards games with tanks, and War Thunder Ground Forces is already a sterling example of this. Although high-speed drifting these little babies around is pretty fun too. Man, this fucking looks... See, in most games featuring guns, all you really have to do is point and shoot. Yeah, you aim for headshots, and maybe sometimes you have to adjust for bullet drop and lead a bit, but in general, that's about all there is to it. But tank combat is different. You're usually firing really large shells that have several seconds of reload time between each shot, so you have to make every shot count. It also tends to happen at much longer ranges, usually several hundred meters or more, and so range estimation becomes an essential skill if you want to be able to properly compensate for your round's drop and hit your target. And it also demands precision. Sure, a tank is a pretty big target, and it's often not that hard to score some kind of hit on it, but actually scoring a hit that does damage is a whole different story. Basically, most any individual shot you'll take in armored combat is its own miniature puzzle. A high stakes, time limited challenge that, if you get it wrong, Optum will give you a chance to try again if your opponent was better at finding the solution. And I love that. And like all good puzzles, if you do get it just right, you're often rewarded with a big old explosion. Some of them will do. Holy sh! Now a big piece of solving this puzzle is understanding the basic gun sight. I'm really glad that so many people seemed to find my video on basic ammo types helpful, so it seemed only natural to follow that up with a look at how to accurately fire that ammo. Obviously, you could have the best, most penetrating ammo in the world, but if you can't actually hit your target with it, it won't do you much good. Thankfully, this topic is a lot more straightforward than all those different ammo types, but I still see a fair number of people confused as to what exactly they're seeing when they look at their gun sight. And even if you have fired your fair share of rounds, there's still some finer concepts in the gun sight that you could very well not be aware of, and knowing them can greatly improve your gunning efficiency. Also, then things got out of hand, and I've ended up throwing in a bunch of other general gunning tips about weak points, etc. too. Whoops. So this video should be a lot quicker than that last one as well, especially if I end this preamble manifesto on why gunning is great and get down to business. So let's get down to business. Now the basic principles behind tank gunnery are fairly simple, but that's not to say that it's necessarily easy to become a great shot. But if you just want to play arcade and have fun blowing stuff up using the shot indicators, that's fine. More power to you. But if you'd like to play a slightly less baby version of the game, one that allows you the satisfaction of getting the shots yourself, you should really be playing realistic or simulation. There you're not going to have a direct indication of how far away your target is, so you have to figure it out and compensate for it yourself. Now the easiest and most straightforward way to zero in a target is of course to simply eyeball it. Intuit how far away they are, aim a bit above to compensate for the drop, and then fire. If you miss, adjust your fire based on where the round hit. This basic approach can definitely be effective, but it's less than ideal. The chance of it working is based purely on how well you know the capability of the round you're firing, and also how well you guesstimate that range. And with the relatively long reload times, in tank combat every missed shot is a golden opportunity for your opponent to become aware of your presence, get into cover and deny you another follow-up shot, or worst of all, return their own, perhaps more accurate shot into you. So ideally, you want the very first shot you fire in pretty much any combat encounter to be on target and at least somewhat effective. And properly understanding and using the gun sight can greatly increase your capability in that regard. Now, at this stage of the Ground Forces game, 1.41 or so, all tanks are using the same generic sights, and that simplifies our discussion a bit. In the future, as much as possible, every tank is going to use its own unique, historically accurate gun sights, with their own methods and capacities, or lack thereof, for range finding and then adjusting for those ranges. So we'll worry about that when we come to it. For now, although the general appearance of the sight is the same across all tanks, the vertical scale, the one that you actually use for adjusting for range, does change depending on the gun and the type of of ammo. An easy way to see this happen is to select a tank with a bunch of different ammo types available that have different ballistic properties. In this example, I've selected this T-34-1942 model. If I fire around to begin the reloading process and then start switching between my different ammo, you can clearly see the scale change, sometimes quite significantly like with the heat rounds, which have a very low muzzle velocity. So the numbers on that vertical scale indicate range, but what exactly do they stand for? Well, they indicate hundreds of meters. So the 4 means 400 meters, the 8 means 800 meters, etc. So as long as you know the range to your target, it's a simple matter of placing the appropriate tick on the vertical scale onto the target and firing. And if the range doesn't directly correlate to one of the ticks, you simply estimate based on the space in between. For example, if the range is about 300 meters, 
you'd use the space halfway between the 2 and the 4. As a comparative example, let's take a look at the T-34-57. That 57mm gun has a much higher muzzle velocity than the 76mm on the other T-34. That's why the ticks at the top of the scale are close together, and the space between them decreases less significantly as they go further down. This is a good visual indicator of why rounds with higher muzzle velocities tend to be easier to hit with. The faster the round is, the less significantly it's going to drop over the same distance, and of course the less you'll have to lead a moving target. So we know how to compensate for the drop of the round using the vertical axis of the sight. That's pretty straightforward. But how do you actually find the proper range to use on that vertical scale? Well that's a little trickier. With enough practice, you can certainly become pretty good at estimating the range based on sight alone. But it really does take a lot of practice. Estimating ranges visually and doing it well is a really tricky thing, especially on a computer screen. And from game to game, where resolution differences and the way that the scale is presented makes it different pretty much every time. Most people will tend to overestimate how far things are. I'll often see people complaining, for example, that they were one shot by a target a kilometer away when they were on a map where that was pretty much an impossibility. It was probably maybe only 500 meters. But there is a means of using the gun sight to generally get a pretty accurate measurement of how far away the target is. This is some more expert level stuff as it involves some solid knowledge of the various dimensions of the tanks you're facing and also a bit of simple math. But you can do it. I believe in you. Now the ability to use the gun sight to determine range is based on a fairly simple fact. While the y-axis changes depending on what kind of ammo you're using, the x-axis markings are identical across all guns and all ammo. This means that thanks to the power of math, as long as you know the size of the target you're looking at, you can use those markings to figure out how far away it is. You don't even have to be that accurate with your numbers most of the time. Though obviously the more accurate you are, the more accurate your results will be, especially at longer ranges. This process is known as stadiometric range finding if you're curious. And that's the fancy technical word for taking an object of a known size, measuring its visually apparent size and distance, and using that to find the actual distance of the object. This works because of similar triangles being proportional and tangents and a bunch of other math stuff we won't really worry about here. Since there's a finite number of tanks you'll be facing and all of their dimensions are known quantities, and in fact many of them even have fairly similar dimensions across different models, remembering these dimensions is not nearly as daunting as it might first appear. And keep in mind that you generally don't have to be that exact, you'll just get better results if you are. So let's reveal the secret magical formula that's going to allow you to find the range of your targets. You ready for this? Okay. Using the marks on the x-axis, that is the horizontal axis of the gun sight, measure the distance between either end of the target as accurately as you can. Divide the target's known dimension, either the length or the width, depending on which side you're facing, by that measurement. If the target's at a particularly oblique angle to you, just try to get the closest you can. Take that result and multiply it by a thousand. In other words, move the decimal three to the right. There, you're done. You got the range. I know that went pretty quickly and that's because it's just that easy. You just do a quick measurement and then some simple division. And remember, the size of a given model of tank is constant. It's going to be the same from game to game. So the only actual variable you're working with in this formula is the measurement you get from your gun sight. That means that once you're familiar enough with the results you get for a given target, you can just directly correlate that measurement to the distance and skip the math altogether. Alright, so let's take a look at an actual example. Here we have the standard Panzer IV C you'll find on the testing grounds. Now for this example I've set it to arcade so that we can just see the actual range and compare it with our calculation. And just ignore the pesky Panzer II sitting in front of him. So we line up the target end to end on the x-axis and find the measurement is about 14. Now most sources I find for the length of the Panzer IV on the internet at least uh, listed at about 5.9 meters, so we'll go with that. I should underline here that any measurements I'm giving are just based purely on the information I've found online. I've done my best and I think you'll find in most cases it won't make a huge difference. But if you demand really accurate precision, please do take any measurements I'm listing here with a grain of salt. Thanks. And now back to math. math. So with our formula, we're looking at 5.9 divided by 14. The result of this calculation is about 0.421, which again, we multiply by 1,000, and we'll forget about the 1 because it's not significant. So our final calculated range is about 420 meters, which is really pretty darn close to the known distance of 400 meters. And remember, we can only be as exact as our actual measurement, which often has a fair amount of margin of error. More importantly, when it comes to actual aiming, we can only be as accurate as the actual vertical mark allow us to be, and so a few dozen meters here or there usually don't matter too much. And you can note that the aiming guide perfectly lines up with the 400 meter tick on the vertical axis. Alright, so let's forget the guides and do it for real. We'll use the same Panzer IV, same side, but from a different distance. 
And since in actual gameplay you usually don't have time to precisely line up your measurements, we're going to worry even less about being exact with our measurement and just kind of go generally from one end of the track to the other. So in this case we'll say our measurement is about 10. So 5.9 divided by 10 times 1000, 590 meters. That's close enough to 600, so we choose where we want to aim, put the 600 mark on there, and... Bam, pretty much dead on. And since we're already here, let's turn our attention to that panther sitting a little bit further back. Now the length of the panther, ignoring the overhang of the gun, is about 6.87 meters. But for this example, and for ease of calculations, we'll round that up to 6.9. And once again, we're not going to worry about being super precise with our x-axis measurement and say it's about 8. So 6.9 divided by 8 times 1,000 ends up equaling about 860. So since I probably undervalued my measurement, I'm going to put this at about 800. Fire and... And yep, pretty much 800. Again, this example shows that you usually don't have to be really precise with your measurements, and you can still get a good result. So how about one more example, this time from a more frontal angle. Now this is the same Panzer IV, and I kind of feel bad for picking on these guys, but unfortunately they were the only things available in the testing grounds when I was recording this footage. But you can take comfort in the fact that at least I'm shooting them with a Panzer IV F2. So it's good old fashioned fratricide. Now the width of the front of a Panzer IV is about 2.9 meters. This one's at a bit of an angle, but we won't worry too much about that. We'll see what kind of effect that ends up having on our actual result shortly. So again, not being really precise with our measurement, we'll say it's about 4. So 2.9 divided by 4 times 1000 ends up being 725 meters, and I'll keep that 5 on just because it's nice and round. With this result, I decide to put the hull of the Panzer between the 600 and 800 meter mark, and it just happens to fit real nicely in there. Fire and... Well, tank's not quite knocked out, but it's really hurting. Looks like it hit the lower part of the turret. So I aim down a little bit, take my second shot, and that knocks out the guys in the front. No more Panzer IV. Here I feel like it's important I point out that there does seem to be a little bit of variance with where rounds fall exactly at longer ranges, especially at lower velocities. This likely simulates that a round slowing down at longer distances due to air resistance isn't really going to land in the exact same space every time. It also could simply have to do with the gun moving a bit after each shot, and crew experience might play into this as well. And of course there's the gun modification research you need to do before the gun will be working at its best accuracy. But regardless of the reason, just be aware that at longer distances when a shell is slowing down, you often won't hit exactly where you're aiming. Now I hope these examples have shown that this method of range finding is a fairly simple but very powerful tool. Now of course how simple it actually is depends on how quickly you can do that division. But again, as you become familiar with common models of tanks in a given tier, you'll soon find that you can quickly correlate the general measurements to the general ranges without doing all that pesky math. And although different models of tanks have their own lengths and widths, many of them actually share the same type of hull. Often they just change the turret. For example, our old friend the Tier 1 Panzer IV C has the same length and width as its upgun brother down in Tier 3, the Panzer IV H. And the many tanks in the venerable T-34 line have a bunch of different turrets, but they all have the same hull length of about 5.9 meters and a width of 3 meters. And many of the assault guns and the tank destroyers like your SUs and your Stugs happen to share the same general hull with other tanks, so their lengths and widths end up being about the same. I'm saying all this just to show that learning the actual lengths and widths of all these different models of tanks is not nearly as daunting a task as it first appears. And remember, all of this rangefinding business is totally optional. If you think it seems a bit too complicated or like a bit too much work, that's completely fine. You can usually get by in most situations pretty well just by going with your own instincts and then adjusting your fire. But like with any other game, knowing a tip like how to properly range find can often give you a significant edge. Especially when it comes to the longer range combat you'll see on larger maps like Kursk and other such maps to come. And to make sure I'm perfectly clear, the relatively precise division and measurement data I was using for these examples is really more for illustrative purposes. You can use more generalized numbers like say assuming an average length of about 6 meters for most tanks and an average width to 3 meters, and in most cases you'll still get pretty decent results. Of course in actual combat, taking even a few seconds to do a little bit of simple division is probably too much to ask most of the time. That's why I highly recommend that you become familiar with the measurements and their corresponding ranges by just spending a bit of time playing around in the testing grounds and in custom battles. There you can take all the time you need working out the numbers yourself, and you'll soon find that you don't even need to do the math anymore. With a little practice, you'll find that you can measure the target and figure out the corresponding range almost subconsciously as you aim at them, and the whole process will quickly become second nature. Creating your own custom game in Kursk is particularly handy for this, because there's a whole bunch of AI vehicles that you can shoot at at long ranges. Just password the game so no one else can get in, and then spend as much time as you want having fun blasting these poor suckers.
And that pretty much covers the basics of the general gun sight. Since this video has already gotten a bit longer than I planned, I'm going to split it into two parts here. For a couple reasons, one of them for the ease of use for you, the viewer, but also just to get it out there so people can start making use of the information. So I hope that you found this part helpful and that you'll join me soon for part two, where we'll cover more general gunnery tips like aiming at a moving target and where to shoot to do the most damage. In the meantime, have fun practicing your ranging and keep calling the population of those pesky Panzer IVs.